We're coming in hot with inspiring guests, witty banter, and colorful commentary for today's veterans and military community. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy cause I'm facing all my giants They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it They tell me I should never even think of trying But that's just me, I'm gonna live out in defiance Oh boy, welcome back to the Tango Alpha Lima Experience I'm over here in Los Angeles, back to my lovely Whoopi And over there with her new setup, including boots that i've never seen before is ashley marie gorbulja hello hi hi thanks for noticing my boots because they're made for walking and that's just what they'll do oh oh it's oh. like one of uh maybe three country songs i actually recognize from a line mm, it's, it's not really well i don't think that's it's a country, country song these boots huh? are made for a walk-in yeah no, that was That's a country. no. Okay. That was Frank Sinatra's daughter, I think, who sang that song. But it's been remade. Let's be sure. But the original Nancy Sinatra. I didn't hear that one either. Boots are made for a walk. Um, look it up. It's classic. I'm not gonna look it up. You keep saying you got something for me. How do you not know the song? While people are like doing their radio thing, trying to switch channels <laughs> right now. <laughs> Stay, I promise. Stay, Alphas. <laughs> I won't sing anymore. <laughs> we have the mute button. Uh, okay, so we are. We have a show today. I don't know if everybody realizes that's why we're here. Uh, why we're all here is because we have a show today. And we're dressed to like sort of today. I like it. Yours is, uh, yours is kind of uh, on the sleeve. Doesn't it say like convention or something? Or did you not? Mine's oh, you didn't do that one. The regular Navy American. I think I picked this one up last year. Yeah, okay. OG. So, you get the OG. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as soon as I hit the shelves, I was like, that's mine now. That's mine. All right. Alphas, you know, you can get all this stuff at Legion um, emblem emblem and emblem sales. And you can get the you can get the new the brand logo, which does not replace the emblem. And you can also get things with the emblem on them you can also get things with pockets i'd love to know how many people love pockets on their polos because i'm not a fan and if you notice at the end of convention the things with out pockets get wiped clean off the floor but they still seem to buy equal amounts or even more with pockets i don't understand but See, i don't know about pockets i mean i in a general sense just struggle as a woman with having pockets you know it's like to buy clothes and the pockets be sewn up they're not functional so i would not want a polo like with a pocket on it nonetheless would i not want pants that had functional pockets so, so both, we go on a, we could go on a pocket rabbit hole trail no, right but now let's really please want to let's please not <laughs> no pockets uh, i think you know and when i buy a suit those uh those pockets are are sewn up and you have this thing and you you actually can open it a seam ripper, ripper yeah. a mm -hmm. seam ripper like you're right now you're dream ripping me <laughs> <laughs> all right okay all right okay I'm gonna right, let's, that move back up. let's move let's, forward let's move into the uh the post banter section mm. of our show uh before we lose people all right ashley you got topic one I do. All right. So we're going to open up. So U.S. space operations face stiff competition from China and Russia. Top Space Force General says this is a Stars and Stripes article. So competition from China and Russia is rapidly eroding the U.S. military's dominance in space. And the Space Force is in the in its current form would struggle in a conflict with the two countries. The general nom uh, the general nominated to lead the service told senators this past week or so, right? So Lieutenant General Bradley C. Saltzman said that the U.S. remains the greatest spacefaring nation on the planet. And for now, we can resist the attack capabilities wielded by its two closest adversaries, but it has not designated systems to operate at a crisis level. He goes on to say, we need to change to be more defendable to, to excuse me to have a more defendable architecture 
to account for the fact that space has shifted from a benign environment to a more contested warfighting domain, he said. Saltzman repeatedly told the Senate Armed Services Committee that he was worried about the pace of advancement by China and to a lesser degree Russia. The committee is vetting his promotion from duty chief of space operations to chief replacing retiring General John Raymond. Yes. So I guess somebody uh, looking to take over is probably also looking for money. I don't understand. I don't I don't get. The battle zone of space in the status quo, are people trying to shoot down our satellites? Are they trying to like what? What is the war fighting up there and what are our weapons? I think that a lot of this comes from very much so information that Intel and analysts are are constantly putting together that the general public is not necessarily always aware of. And I think that these things are general blanket statements to say, hey, like we've run the, the com- you know, the compared analysis of our abilities, our capabilities as warfighters. And based on the amount of things that we utilize satellites for, um, there's just so much tech and what we know about space. Like, for example, we know more about space than we do our own oceans. I think that's I, I'm not arguing. Process. I'm not arguing, any arguing of that. Things. But you're asking, is it relevant? No, or- I'm asking what physical physical conflicts are happening in space because the language that he uses Mm -hmm. sounds like we need a space tank and we need some space marines because we're going to go up there and kill each other for some reason change a venue maybe make it more exciting than killing each other down here i just I, i i mean i don't get it if he had used the language like well, we need more satellites because the GPS c- could be in a uh, thing. We need to, we need, we need to be able to block theirs and control drones and and have the kind of visibility on the ground. That's different language to me. The language mm-hmm. I'm seeing here is Star Wars, the movie, so, not the missile defense. So as the article go, go, goes on, um, the the gentleman up for um, you know chief. relieving chief. Uh, it ta- excuse me. <clears throat> it discusses you know recruiting and commissioning. It discusses how the space force is not facing the recruit uh, is not facing the recruiting difficulties plaguing other services and has more volunteers than it can accept. So I think that's interesting, right? So if they're having a surplus of volunteers and folks who want to switch over to this branch, um, he chief the general you know goes on to say if confirmed he would be more broadly he would more broadly loosen enlistment standards to account for the highly technical skills needed for the service branch and only 23 percent of 17 to 24 year old americans were fully qualified to serve in the military i just think it's interesting that that was thrown in there because if you're really not having a problem with space force will allow i don't know like that that was a that part was the language that kind of confused me here because obviously the advantage of being small, the F- space force, I mean, what they're like, I'm super 400 confused. strong. I'm super confused. Right. Now. You're, are you, <clears throat> are, are you, are you talking about what I'm, t- or did you change the subject? I'm I talking, feel- I'm talking about the same article. It's no, talking no, we, about space force and it's strength. My question, right? my question about it, mm-hmm. like, they're having recruiting problems. Everybody's having recruiting problems. Sure. But I'm wondering, I'm still wondering, I'm still wondering about this warfighter thing that, that he's talking about with space. And I, I don't, I mean, I read through that article, but I don't think, it, I don't think that was sussed out. Um, and I don't, if we're, if we're in danger of being attacked from space, I don't think that's the kind of intel that, stays stays suppressed for very long uh, at mm-hmm. least the conspiracy theorists would be out there going you know they got people ready to r- repel from uh, space down here to get us they got these special suits they they can do re-entry i mean i i i hate to be a cynic but it sounds like uh, a play for money you know i 
I don't think you're incorrect there, right? Because if you're talking about weapon systems, you're talking about joint capabilities, right? So guardians need to be able to operate just as of any other branch, Ooh, right? Guardians. Yeah. So, you know, he used it. they need to be able to, you know, practice what they preach, right? Like if, if you're going to get them in front of a very Star trek -y, Star Command kind of vibe and they're all like, talking to the computers and reporting back about what's going on in the immediate. And they're looking at all these reports, but they can't have like a, a field training exercise that really battle tests them. Then, yeah, I mean, this article is definitely more about a play, a, a grab for money, considering what you've got the National Defense Authorization Act and outlined priorities for the Pentagon, which included, well, I don't think it's been voted on yet, but it calls to increase uh, a number of guardians, right? Like, so if we're at an 8,400 force, like 8,600 force, like what's 200 more people going to do if you don't have the warfighter capabilities for operations? Right. I don't know. So These are my thoughts. These are my thoughts. No, I get, I get your thought. And, <laughs> and we, we have a lot of thoughts on it. I'd love to get, I'd love to get, I guarantee we can't get Lieutenant General Bradley C. Saltzman on the show. But when someone says, we can now resist the attack capabilities wielded by its closest adversaries. That's not classified information. Mm. He's putting it out there that people have attack capabilities on us. And for now, for now, we can handle it. But, you know, in the future. So I, I, I mean, we don't we don't have the answer. So I'm belaboring a point. <clears throat> um, but it, it does seem like it does seem like the language of we got troops in space. We need people and dollars, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Shooting at each other up <laughs> in space, which doesn't make any, that kind of war fighting doesn't make any sense. You know mm -hmm. what kind of war fighting does make sense? War fighting on the ground done by, uh, oh, done boy. by, by ground pounders, uh, infantry men and army rangers, like our guest, former U.S. Army Ranger, Jonathan Wechter. Jonathan <laughs> served in the 75th Ranger Regiment, had multiple combat deployments and spent three years as a Blackwater contractor. Jonathan resides in San Diego, California, where he works as a personal trainer and nutritionist, competes as an elite athlete and advocates for mental wellness and therapeutic use of psychedelics to recover from trauma. We'll be back with Jonathan right after the break. If you were stationed at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987, you and your family may be victims of toxic water poisoning. Cancers, birth defects, deadly illnesses have all been linked to the contaminated water. With passage of the PACT Act, the government is ready to be held accountable. You could be awarded financial compensation for your suffering, but you must act now. Get your free case review. Call True Law at 833 686 4242. That's 833 686 4242 or visit justicecamplejune.com slash TAL. Raising money for your American Legion programs has never been so easy. Terry Lynn Fundraising offers customized fundraising programs, dedicated support, discounts and incentives, and premium products for your members to sell. We're talking delicious nuts, confections, and snack mixes that will keep your supporters coming back for more. You can see how simple and effective Terry Lynn can be to use for your next fundraiser when you request a free tasting sample at terrylynn.com AL. Check it out and get ready to have the most successful fundraiser yet. Visit terrylynn.com AL. Okay, Alphas, as we promised, we have a special guest here, Jonathan Wechter. Welcome to the Tango Alpha Luna experience. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Uh, we are doing much better now that you're here. Uh, and I think that Ashley, as always, she wants to get the first question. She's She always wants the first question and the last word. That's how it is dealing with that. Understand. I can understand that. I'm the same way. <laughs> I, I do my very best. Okay. And, uh, you know, this is who I'm working with. Jonathan. like, I got to, you know, I got to totally deal. I got to figure it out. Yeah, you got to keep up with him. He's a big personality, too. 
Big personality. It's a nice way to put it. This is a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Jonathan. So you're a U.S. Army veteran, uh, served in the 75th Ranger Regiment. And obviously, I'm going to assume here that, you know, physical fitness and, you know, mental health, all of these things are a part of being a Ranger, right? Yes, they are. Um, they definitely have aspects in it. How has that inspired you on your current journey in health and wellness? Um, it showed me what I'm capable of and what I can demand of myself. And then what I can demand of myself and how I can push myself is how I can also help coach others in that same region. Not necessarily, not every um, patient or client wants to have an intense and journey either. Some really do. And um, I think also working with different styles of leadership in the military, you get to see what works best for some people, what doesn't, what does work, what doesn't. And when it comes to personal training, it's not just training. It has a leadership quality in it where you have to be able to read your clients to get them to keep coming back as well or to help them get to the results that they want to get to. That's the most important part. It's just what's going to work for you and how do we get you there? So from your military journey or journey to becoming a, a personal trainer, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what it's like to be an online coach, a nutritionist and, you know, post COVID, so, during COVID. When I first got into the military, I started doing contracting work and going to school. Um, being a contractor overseas, you have a lot of downtime for the most part. So that was another easy kind of gateway into studying more, working out, trying different things. My whole approach with it was that I wanted to be able to coach someone on different avenues of fitness that I've done. So I also picked up long distance running like ultra marathons, triathlons, different things like that along this journey as well to be able to coach those. Um, but you have such a physical demand in any type of special operations, um, regardless of what specific aspect is in. So it just kind of seems almost natural that, um, I mean, don't get me wrong that everybody falls in love with the fitness side of it. There are plenty of veterans that don't enjoy fitness. And when the military is done and their time is done with their service, they drop off and because there's no one holding them to that standard. A lot of people just want it that. They want the accountability portion of it. But like, I kind of know what I'm doing, but like, I'm just not doing it. Can you help me just keep accountable? So some of it's just um, helping them get past motivation and into consistency. I, I think that's spot on as, as someone who is actively looking for a new, uh, a new gym currently. <laughs> Accountability is important. And I think that is really present when you're in the service, regardless of your branch, right? There's a standard. You are to meet that standard. And there are many that will exceed that standard and others, you know. Sometimes they need that extra push. I couldn't tell you how many times I'd have soldiers who definitely needed an extra push. And I said, go, please fill up those water cans. Let's PT now. Let's just make it easier for you. Let's just, let's just get, let's just get the discipline out of the way now. Let's do it. So Absolutely. I also will say that now. like this version of myself wasn't always the version of me in the military. So I went in at 18, at 18, especially on special operations. A lot of time you're just trying to keep up. Like it's, you're around guys who were, you know, division one athletes or 25, 26 or the muscle majority. I was straight out of high school, still trying to, I'm still giving it my all just to make it in and out of each day. So um, I totally understand that because the fitness journey is not one that you can have without consistency. And everyone always needs that push every now and then the days where you don't want to get out of bed. Those are the days that you can rely on motivation. But you can't always rely on motivation to get you through because there are going to be those days where you're like, no, I'm not going to do it. And that's where the consistency comes in, that extra push. I think that's like the, the big C in the formula, right? Consistency, consistency, consistency. So, you know, discipline, consistency, but sometimes motivation can be fleeting. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, she lost me a big C of consistency. Um, I, I, I do want to point out something that I recently realized that paying your gym dues in and of itself will not get you in shape. And I was, I was very disappointed to learn that, that you actually have to visit and uh, you have to yeah. fight against gravity. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a lot of work. They're so regular Sir Isaac Newton over here. Yeah. I'm one of those that, I'm one of those that once I got out, I really, I wasn't that interested in keeping up that 
keeping up that standard, which it was fine for me for a while, but now I got the now I got the COVID rule. I got to uh, I got to address that. So I not only have to pay for the gym, I'm gonna have to go. So when you so when you fair. when you run, what's that? It's a wild thing. You got to pay for your own pain. <laughs> right. Mm. So when you did mention that some people don't want that discipline aspect. I, I, I can't imagine they're looking uh, for a personal trainer that comes that comes uh, from the military and expecting anything less than that. Uh, someone that's coming from a ranger battalion, the closest thing you guys will ever be to Marines and saying, <laughs> oh, man's got <kind> of jokes. <laughs> And and not wanting you to like get in their grill. Uh, everybody is different, and that's why I was talking about the leadership aspect of it, where you have to some. Uh, naturally, I'm six three, about two hundred sixty pounds, and my voice is this deep, and I do have my background, so there I can be some of like one of the most intimidating people to females. Where I have to show them like there's another side where I'm not in your grill. We're talking through this. This is where my expertise lies in. I'm not here just to be a voice screaming in your ear or something like that. There is, you know, different ways of going about this. Type. Even not being in the gym, you go to a track and go to the beach, we can get it done many different other ways. And as you know, like you said, uh, how you fell off as is expected because you're a Marine, that there is time <laughs> to come back and we can get Got you him. back in. <laughs> just Got him. I had to get it back in. Well, there's, there's something we said about the endurance of extreme excellence. One can't do it forever. Um, Marines okay. just do it during their enlistment. So, <laughs> if uh, so, you're not going to show up in a drill cover, or right? No, no, nothing like that. I'm so far removed from that. That's why I got the long hair. I'm trying to stay so far away from being associated with that. All right, cool. And so now, what now? What Ashley and I do is we we switch positions where she asks the first question, I follow up. Holly had a dirty look on her face. I don't appreciate that. Um, I don't appreciate that, ma'am. And so now I'm gonna ask the first question. You're not, you're not just looking at the physical. You're kind of holistic here. Uh, yes, sir. You work with the mental and the, and I, like I told you before the show, we're, we're talking about your use of psychedelics for that and yeah. I my knowledge base on this I'm first one to say things like I don't know I don't pretend to know stuff I don't know never do it uh, my knowledge base on psychedelics is so minuscule um, I know they listen to George Clinton a lot but other than that I don't I don't know I don't know how you use it therapeutically and how you use it to uh, help someone holistic as they're bringing up their physical you're helping with their mental and spiritual, I assume. And can you can you kind of tell me on my mer crayon marine level uh, about <laughs> this use of psychedelics in your work? Yes. So I will say I'm not a shaman either. I'm not <laughs> out here giving out medicine to people. You know, that this is just from my own experience and what okay. people can at least in mind. Um, so you know, with fitness as well that's very good for your mental health but it's only gonna get you so far if you have like the true demons in your life where you have stuff buried down deep and a lot of veterans are just fighting that especially from the GWAT war where what psychedelics kind of basically do is they put you on another state of consciousness almost like an elevated state of consciousness where maybe your receptors are more susceptible to more things or just your brain it also um correlates different parts of your brain that aren't normally correlated together. So you're just, like I said, in an ele elevated existence of consciousness. And when you're at that and you reflect on, you know, your deepest and darkest things and get to sit on them and almost, it's not like you think about them and then you're good, but you can sit on them and then set them again and set them again, instead of just suppressing and burying and burying when you sit with your life problems and you face them, they, not that they don't become a life problem, but they just become a lot more rational and easier to face in life. And I think a lot of guys, especially from the GWAT war, really could use that, especially with how everything just ended. It doesn't seem like people have answers for anybody nowadays. So I just like to push that you have the answers within you. It's just a matter of going and sitting with them. And you don't need psychedelics to go do that. 
but psychedelics, that was kind of like my meditation time almost, where when I started taking them, it wasn't for that purpose. I was a lost soul as well, trying to suppress things, figure things out. I was on a drug run of just abusing drugs and different things. And luckily along that line, I was introduced to psychedelics, which then I realized were a tool, not a drug. And then they just helped me completely rewire again and get myself back on track. I'm hearing the, I'm hearing a lot of uh, therapy lingo, but you, you're not doing this with a guy. It's basically self. I'm hearing both. It sounds like there's some therapy, but I'm hearing a lot of self-reflection. So do you do this by yes. yourself or do you do this with someone who's asking? Some, or, or... some are with a shaman. Some are just on your own or with a group of friends. So when I first started taking them, it was at music festivals, like you were saying, George Clint. Uh, it was listening to music. Let's trip out. Let's, you know, be a hippie or whatnot. And uh, it was almost in those festivals and concerts where I'm supposed to be sitting listening to this music and my brain is off in outer space thinking about X, Y, and Z where I kind of started putting everything to place. But some are with shaman like ayahuasca. Um, that's a root from the Amazon um, that you take as a drink and you have an experience. That one is a guided tour, but like mushrooms, um, LSD, things like that. That's kind of just come and take as you please. And I just prefer to go to a national park, do a hike with my dogs, sit and be, so she, um, how I said I was contracting for a while. After every deployment I'd go on contracting, I had to just go right out to say like Lake Tahoe or Yosemite, a place like that, and just be by myself, be within nature, do reflection, um, just trying to sit with everything. And trying to come to, to come to grasp with a lot of things, especially with the closure of Afghanistan, things like that. Um, it's not like I could turn to another veteran and be like, hey, how do I get through this? You know, we're all on the same of just like, unless you're talking to a Vietnam vet, no one really had that experience of fighting for something that had a downfall and demise that it did. So I personally just like to go and reflect on my own, figure things out on my own, because what works for you isn't going to work for me. And that's another thing I press as well. Just because psychedelics work for me doesn't mean it's going to work for anybody else. But this is just one way I at least self-helped myself through these situations if i could so as also a mental health advocate someone who is uh, you know uh, a pts diagnosing myself uh i've always been interested in holistic health especially with this neurological cocktail of, of medicines that are out there right and i think as everyone goes through an individual journey veterans with ptsd or tbi you know there are a limited number of therapy programs that are provided by say the department of veteran affairs right so in some cases va claims you know that you know, alternative therapy pro therapy programs are, are not evidence-based while other therapies are currently being studied at the va so like, we know these these things are happening but, you know, looking at alternative therapies and treating PTSD, TBI, and also just the long extended processes that are required of us and the work that we have to do, just as we have to do work in the gym, it's right. really impossible to defeat an enemy with an outpost inside your head. So like going, you know, having those nature walks, like I have emotional support animals. I have taken that journey in several different ways, whether it's through talk therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy to, you know, low level light therapy, there's craniological stimulation, there's, you know, um, equine therapy. I know a lot of folks uh, a few weekends from now, I'm, I'm going to be super excited to go and do some equine therapy myself. I'm interested in the, the psychedelics journey as a veteran who is unfortunately someone that's been diagnosed with PTS and has other own, you know, traumas and trials and tribulations, if you will. Um, I think it's important to recognize that, you know, vets that, you know, are experiencing PTS, TBI, you know, there's a limited number of therapy programs that are currently provided by the Department of Veteran Affairs, you know, to, to my knowledge, right, to many of our knowledge. And uh, even alternative therapies are sometimes deemed not, you know, evidence-based while other therapies are, you know, of course, being studied more robustly. Um, I believe that everyone can't really use the cookie cutter approach. And you know what psychedelics have done for you is what cognitive behavioral therapy has done for me. And I think it's important to recognize that there are plenty of different you know, therapy modalities that are out there, whether that's equine therapy, that's um, you know, 
high performance, uh, you know, neurofeedback, there's cranial electrical stimulation, there's service animals. I know I have two emotional support animals. Um, and you mentioned, Jonathan, you, you have animals yourself, and you've also mentioned like nature. And I think that's so powerful. We live in a world where we're constantly in front of screens. So reconnecting and finding that space is so important. So my, you know, question leading into this is, as you've had conversations and probably even clients and, you know, the personal training, uh, how have you helped folks discover, um, you know, whether it's not necessarily, like you said, you're not the shaman, right? Like you're, you're not saying, you know, go, go try this, but Hey, maybe it could work. Like, how does that conversation go with people who approach you about, you know, psychedelics or, um, additional therapies? How the conversation goes is kind of how we started is in what worked for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. I'm not going to have your answer and I'm going to be the first one to preach that every time as everyone is different, um, in the anatomy. So say I go to personal train you and you want something, I go to personal train someone else and they want the same result. You guys have to go about it two completely separate ways just because that's how the anatomy works. It's the same with psychology and anything to do with the brain or anything along those lines where your trauma is your trauma. So even if it's, you know, someone who necessarily wasn't in the military, but maybe had a rough upbringing or different events happen in your life, your traumas are your traumas. So what worked for you, how you're saying kind of behavior, um, therapy and things like that, those didn't work for me necessarily. I didn't get much out of talking to somebody about something because it just felt as, and this is just me, but I didn't understand how that person could try and understand what I was going through without having any of those similar experiences in life. You can read from a book, but that doesn't make you an expert. And that's just my way of thinking going about it. Mine has all been firsthand experiences what's got me best through. So I don't try and tell anybody I have the answers to anything, but this is just what has helped me. That's the way I try and go about it. Um, different psychedelics work differently. So, Mushrooms have a much different effect than LSD, have a much different effect than ayahuasca. And here in Southern California, it's a lot more open also than any other part of the states I've been to, maybe besides like Washington or Oregon, they're kind of on the same bandwagon as California. But a lot and lot more vets have started doing psychedelics, specifically in SoCal. Um, ayahuasca is a big one, mushrooms is probably the biggest one. But and I think I try and preach is it's not like these are a self-help drug in the sense of like you take it and you figure stuff out and you're good. Like you take it and you have to put in work. You have to work on yourself. You have to sit there and sit with all your stuff. You have to work on trying to dive deep into your insecurities or your traumas or whatever it may be. And it's not like these psychedelics have only helped me with some military related trauma. They also help me you know, get over the insecurities of just being a human being, being comfortable in your own skin, being confident in your own skin, being understanding of your downfalls and how they can help, how picking yourself back up will then get you better to then have them hit you in the same way when you, when you face other life issues. So that was my biggest preach to it is of this is to help you also later on down the road, not just right now with the traumas you've already had, but when you want to start thinking of having a family or a significant other or something like that, you want to come to them as whole as a person as you can. I'm not trying to come to them and like, I got all this stuff I'm trying to fix. So at the time I hopefully fix them or fix some of them, I'm a completely different person now because I changed drastically while sitting with all my stuff. And then it's easier to see people who do attempt to sit with themselves and work on themselves and become better. And the people who just find the excuse to not to, which is, the same thing as we were saying uh, with physical fitness, it's consistency and it's work. It's always work. Every day, you know, some days you're going to wake up and have a bad day. I'm a Absolutely. big proponent of, of stoicism. Like, you know, I can only control, like I can only control, you know, the way I respond to things and having that emotional regulation and that self-awareness and working on that every day is so important yeah. and giving yourself grace and kindness. I think all too often, many service members, veterans, you know, even our military families, extended partners, like we're all just trying to figure this thing out called life. And like, not all of us that wander are lost. And as we're trying so desperately to figure out who we are as individuals, self-acceptance is so important. And I think 
as you go through that journey through your trauma, whether that's from your past or trying to just move to a, a present self, right? Like I am here now, this is what I'm experiencing and enjoying life. Cause I think far too often as we have the conversations about PTS, TBI, and, you know, just general mental health, because, you know, stressors come from every which way and they'll hit you when you're the lowest, when you're at your high, it doesn't matter, but being able to manage yourself and those expectations for yourself are so important. So Absolutely. important in that journey. It's um, all about perspective, how to be able really to switch is. perspective in life and how to find the positives in it or Mm-hmm. Just find the little things that get you on your almost mental Rolodex of how to get yourself through situations. And sometimes it's as easy as we're on a flying rock in space. Am I really supposed to be taking this that seriously? You know, like, yeah, all these serious things have happened to me and all these traumatic events are happening in the world. And we're just an intelligent species that knows how to pull a trigger now, essentially. Sometimes you just got to take a step back and remind yourself, like, and we're all going to die at some point. None of this is supposed to be as serious as we're taking it. Obviously, life has its important issues where you have to take seriously. Those are the times where you don't need to wake up and what am I doing? To, like, I'm failing myself at this. I'm not doing this. I didn't do this. Sometimes you just need those resets of just like, I'm not going to do fuck all today. And I'm just going to hang out with my dogs. and I'm going to go to a park. And we're, that's all it's going to be. I'm not going to take that serious. Like you, you have to be able to take the, that time and that space for yourself. And I know some people say that, oh, well, you're being selfish. No, I'm taking care of myself. Self-care is important. And that's a part of the healing journey, uh, regardless of where you are, whatever chapter you're in, like you're writing that every day. And when you allow others to give that narrative, like they are self-imposing their limits on you. So okay, I think as service members- selfish, I'm fine with being selfish. I'm cool with being selfish. And that's how you want to classify it. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Well, now you're in my zone. <laughs> um, I will say one of one of your principles just came to life because Ashley was talking about you have to give yourself I, I, Hallmark. She was you have to give yourself grace and all this. All the things. Not, not me. If I have an issue that I need to work through, I I don't do any of that. It's it's about pushing forward and pushing through it. So what works for what works for Ashley is definitely not going to work for me. I can't like, I can't do a treat yourself day and it, you know, it'll all be okay. That doesn't work for me. It's like, we have an issue. I got a barrel right, like right through it and and get it done. And that's, that's, and that's for me. And that probably wouldn't work for her. It would probably drive her crazy. Like I do. And, uh, you, I forgot what you said because I say so many things. It was a half hour ago when I I thought of it and Ashley was still going. So I wanted, you were, ah, what were you talking about? This is now I'm stuck here. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let that one go. And I'm probably going to have to (laughs) send you an email later to get the answer to my question. Um, Absolutely. But I'm I'm a similar way where if there is an issue, I like to attack it. And that's where say it's something mentally, as we were saying, where I'm in a mental break of the day or something came up where it's one of those days where you don't want to do anything and just kind of lay in bed. Those are the days I try and attack it where I set aside that time for myself and just like, hey, I'm going to take you know, a couple grams of mushrooms. I'm just going to sit and be, and that's how I attack my problems. Saying like how, I was on, how you're on that elevated um, sense of consciousness, that's just where I do my best thinking or at least my best reflecting, um, especially shrooms are very wholesome too. People like there's the high spirituality sense of uh, shrooms when you're on them, and that's kind of where I was saying that sense of like sometimes you just can't take this stuff so seriously. Shrooms remind you like, hey, dude, you're on a you're on a flying rock going millions of miles an hour, sur- like flying around a star that burns hotter than you could ever imagine. That's gonna all end at some time. Sometimes yeah, you just gotta yeah. put some things in perspective. Like you know what, I'm I'm good, I'm fine, I'm doing all right, I'm working on myself. I got my own issues, but so does everybody else. That's what it was when you said that uh, none of this is as serious as we make it. And I, I want to say that to so many people every single day, uh, even at, you know, in my American Legion post, we're, we're, we have, there's a certain person who uses the word war. I didn't start this war, but I'm going to end it. And we're talking about a nonprofit 
um, matter of opinion on what to do about something and they take that so seriously or uh, they're having some issue at home or with their job and it sends them down a, a spiral where their mood is affected for days and weeks and ends and i just want to tell them with the legion thing i'm going we're not curing cancer here we're right we're doing good work but we're none of it is that serious and uh that that to me right right there is the biggest perspective that i'm going to take away because I, I I already believe it and I'm I'm a vessel of confirmation bias so I appreciate you <laughs> I know you're a vessel of confirmation here. bias I have to remind you <laughs> just as you remind me that not to be so serious or relax a little bit and yeah, I think sure. that's what's so nice about our dynamic in general so there's your there's your compliment and, for the day John. and I'm going, I have a final question it's a dumb question okay that's what I do um so you, you talked about taking mushrooms or whatever the first thing i said to me is i don't even like regular mushrooms on my pizza so if you can't and i imagine all of this stuff tastes foul like i don't know some of it does I, for sure i don't know what's in ayahuasca but i can't imagine me going give me another one um no you don't want to. no you don't <laughs> for sure because I don't, I, I, I don't consume things that I can't stand. So, and are there, so I'm wondering about uh, people's, when they're just getting into things, they don't know how the, the benefit to them is something as simple as, I don't like how it tastes. And I know with ayahuasca, they don't like how things exit their body um, mm -hmm. from what I've heard. So how 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 do they start and like why would you so with shrooms they have ways of like cooking it into chocolate like candy bars kind of like a marijuana edible like they have ways of doing that um they're just fewer and far between because now that marijuana is legal you can find marijuana anything you know what i mean right, right. the biggest thing is that since it's still categorized as a category one drug that you're basically getting it as is and you kind of have to figure it out where the more we can at least get people aware of what's going on and how these can affect you and different things and can be sold like marijuana through dispensary then they're going to have every last thing you can imagine you know drinks desserts whatever but for the time being the only alternative that i've seen is people cooking them into chocolate bars so they do have that and i have seen like farmers market tents starting to sell them they're getting there i don't obviously they're not selling dispensaries i know it's decriminalized in california but it's still not like legal for sale and things like that so i think the more we get down the road and can get more people on the topic of conversation that this isn't heroin this isn't crack this isn't you know i mean these are drugs that you can take or drugs there, um, a shroom is a you know it's a plant it, it's a fungus it grows on certain things just like any other mushroom does um once you get people on board with that more so of getting them out of obviously the government did their own work into trying to scare people into not taking these things like they do every other drug they have their whole drug campaigns of x y and z but the more you get people on board like hey this isn't something you take and you're whacked out and you're you know you get addicted to this and then you're, you're not a they have no purpose to society that this is doing the exact opposite these things are helping you become a whole person and sit with your things and one of the things that it really helped me do is just become comfortable with who i am as a person because i'm from philadelphia i'm you know, flamboyant, like to dance, I'm loud, I'm charismatic, different things. And then I get to special operations and a lot of the guys, are, you know, stone cold, killer, thousand mile stare, don't talk to me unless I'm going to bang you up type of, bro, I was like, I'm, this, that's not me. I'm not quiet, that's for sure. <laughs> so I was always constantly questioning, like, where do I fit in? How do I fit in here? And you definitely find people who you relate to, but a lot of the people I looked up to weren't similar to me. So I was kind of questioned, like, should I, how do I change myself? How should I be? I should, and psychedelics, it was just like, nope, you are exactly who you are supposed to be. You're supposed to be this person in this manner to this. Because maybe, I'm not saying this is my purpose, but even just coming onto this show and talking about it. 
someone hearing someone who's very low town well like a low tone not very charismatic doesn't have a lot of energy they might not get the same type of like oh that guy seems like you know he's he's got character to him he's comfortable with himself and i do get that a lot which is honestly one of the best compliments you can get is that i look comfortable in my own skin because it takes a lot of work to get there it takes a lot of work to get to being comfortable with anything with yourself so even the people who don't have ptsd or necessarily heavy traumas that they have to face there's something that everybody can work on you there's always something for you to be able to work on and i think that's at least one of the big takeaways for me that this isn't just for someone who's trying to fight traumas and get past something that there's always something that you can work on in life and it doesn't take psychedelics to work on this anxiety i think you got this handled i would say that you have a tailor made skin it's very comfortable looking it's well, that was very Hannibal Lecter, but I'm going to yeah. allow that to slide. Who are you, I'm just going to take it for what it is. You know, I'm just going to take it for what it is. <laughs> well, being comfortable, I wanna, being uncomfortable. I want to go ahead and, and thank you for being here with us today and bringing us some perspectives on all of this. And uh, Holly's going to have some information in the show notes for people who want to dig in a little bit further. Um, I, I'm going to... I'm going to call you out on something because there's a rule about people from Philadelphia. You okay. know they're from Philadelphia because within three minutes of meeting you, they tell you they're from Philly. Philly. And you didn't do it. I mean, I've known you for like an hour and it just came out. It just came out. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, challenging your Philly cred. Okay. You don't even eat cheese whiz on your cheesesteak, do you? Ew, no. Ew, that's terrible. Ew, he's from no. Philly. They they do that. No, no past, one from Philly genomes. actually does it. That's a tourist thing. That's a tourist thing. It's a tourist thing. Oh, you put actual like no one from Philly goes to Geno's or Patch. That doesn't happen. That's a tourist trap. If you want a good cheesesteak, you go to Dallas Sandro's or Tony Luke's. Whoa! This is the guy. This is the guy. There he is. Yeah. Is there, is yeah. there, is there, I'm the guy that's like on the Fresh Prince. Like that's not a cheesesteak. You see the grease through the bag. Like that's a cheesesteak. That's right a cheesesteak. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I, mm, I like you. Listen, you're from Ohio. Don't tell him about cheesesteak. <laughs> Listen. You okay. tell him about Chili's where you went for prom. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, rude! I didn't even go to prom. What's anyway. that? <laughs> anyway, I am That's proud to have been 20 That's minutes from a cornfield, 20 minutes from a lake. It's chilly. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, thanks so much. We gotta we gotta go consume our drug of choice, carbohydrates, as we have this uh great there you go. coming to us here. And um, but I do wanna I do wanna thank you for being on here. Um, teaching me that I have to do more than pay for a gym membership. I actually have to <laughs> physically show up and use it. So I'm going to take that information with me and consider it uh consider I'm gonna it, keep paying the bill so thank you so you much go. and alphas if you want to if you want to learn more about this holistic approach of the mind body and the spirit that john has talked about look in the show notes go check it out and while you're doing that we're going to go to break but then come back like don't take your psychedelics now and miss the end of the show because we're going to be back real soon after this break Thank you so much for having me. A veteran is a veteran. A veteran is a veteran. A veteran is a veteran. The American Legion embraces all current and former members of the military and endeavors to help them transition into their communities. We are Veterans Strengthening America. We are the American Legion. Oh boy. Would you, do you have uh, any takeaways from that interview there? Ms. Ashley? I do. I do. Um, what a treat. My goodness. Um, he has just so much to say. I am excited to continue to follow him on Instagram and his journey. Um, I think it really speaks to the cookie cutter model doesn't work. And that as veterans, like we kind of have to figure out what works for us. Right. And his journey is, is unique. And obviously for, for anyone who's, who's looking at, for alternative, you know, therapies, things like, you know, see guidance with, you know, the appropriate officials and folks who can kind of help you navigate that. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities. And I think as, you know, 
we have more and more of these conversations about like psychedelics, about alternative therapies, we will continue to normalize and reduce any stigma um, for, for service members out there trying to um, find a way to, to help them, you know, resolve and heal. Oh, that was a period, not a comma. I thought you're, I thought you're still going. Oh, no. I thought you're still going. I thought you're still nope. going. Oh, All right. Cute. Thanks, though. Thanks for giving me my space. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're, we're in therapy together. That's, we are. Yeah. What, 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 is, what does Mr. Mark CB say? Every time you get a group of veterans together, what happens? Fights. No, he didn't say that. He's a therapy. therapy. <laughs> therapy shout out to mr mark cv our judge i don't advocate. know if it is two a group we'll have to ask him two, all right maybe we're back to my we're back to my favorite part of the show i need everybody to to get their men their mental ammunition ready to be able to <laughs> tackle our topics on today's version of <laughs> rapid fire i feel like we need to produce that with like echoes and like bombs going off and I just think it would be amazing. Uh well, like John Super Wayne producer Quality, Holly like, like barely looked at me to laugh. She like we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um all right this one's a this one's a heart heart warmer. Yay. Actually this will be good for you. Warm warm this. Oh all the fuzzies warm and fuzzies. I yep. love it. It's great. All right, this is from Legion Town, USA. As I tell you alphas all the time, if you get your stuff on Legion Town, I actually go there and I read it. And sometimes I pull a story like this for use on the show. I hope an alpha wrote this. If not, I hope my alphas step up. Anyway, uh, this is a World War II veteran who joins a Legion post prior to his 100th birthday. 100th birthday. They finally got him. I mean, that membership, <laughs> that membership person's like, I've been working long, I've been working, but I got decades, him. decades. <laughs> I got him. Uh, this is a new American Legion member on Sunday, August 21st, a couple of months shy of his 100th birthday. World War II veteran Lou Moore was inducted into American Legion post 348, a recipient of the Congressional Gold Medal awarded to Chinese American veterans of World War II in 2021. Lou is looking forward to turning 100 so he can promote his memoir, Eternal Love, about a 74-year marriage to Nelly Hatsumi Maeda Moore, a Japanese-American high school valedictorian who was held at the Gila Bend Relocation Center. Lou and Nelly met and married a couple of months after his honorable discharge in 1946. Lou served in the Army Air Force, Air Force in the Army Air Force, in the European Theater of Operations until after VE v- e Day. Uh, Moore's book, Eternal Love, ranked on Amazon as best Asian autobiography. Uh, just shout out Richard Hayes, post 43 or post 348 commander who administered the oath. And um, I don't know if his 74 year marriage is threatened, but somebody named Linda Evans Hayes informed Moore that the Legion Auxiliary would adopt him. May I kiss you on the cheek? She asked. I'm waiting, he said. He added, I have two cheeks. I'd like to point out that he has four, but thankfully he didn't offer those to be kissed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I always appreciate just the the dry wit there. Just what a clever man. What a romantic. I love it. Oh, Isn't he romantic? Such a romantic. What branch of service was he in? I have this running theory that my Army my Air Navy... Corps. Wow. Army Air Corps. Okay, wow. This is before the before the Air Force and way before the Space <laughs> Force. He was yes. in the Army Air Corps. So what I mean, I don't think I would have much less a person. I, I don't think I would have a coffee mug that I could keep around for 74 years. They kept another human being in each other's lives for 74 years. That's amazing to me. And a hun like boot member. I mean, I mean boots. a boot, a boot member a at, boot. at 100. That's that's awesome. And I want to, I don't see the state, so I don't know where this 
348 is. Um, what'd you say, Holly? Could you mime that a little bit but better? Oh, it's she thinks it's Arizona. Did I get it? Sounds like smells like cactus, um, Arizona. <laughs> Two uh, words, two <laughs> American Legion. <laughs> so where wherever you are, post three four eight. Uh, good on you. I hope that this person on his hundredth birthday was your one hundred percent membership sign up. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be amazing? I have a I have a I have a, a challenge for our alphas. I would oh. honestly like. I would love to have a poll like. Which branch do you think is the most romantic? I'm banging on. I really like. I whoa, really, really whoa! It's a, Hold this on, is let, a kid me, friendly let me digress. Sh- it's a let kid friendly show. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> I'm thinking. Um, I don't know. I have I have this running theory that the Navy is the most romantic. Yeah, I don't what? know. A girl my, in every port, my... Navy. Is that what you're saying? They have what? that reputation. Being romantic, having a I don't girl. Know. Having a girl in every port, I don't think that's very romantic from what I've heard of. Obviously, Marines are the most romantic, so shall mm, we move Marines, on? Marines, right? Okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Maybe Army? I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. We'll, we'll put it out for the fields. Let's see. All right. Holly has suggested that <clears throat> you hold your votes for now. Think about it, because maybe we will <laughs> release we will release the, the data in February. <laughs> sure. Let's do it. Why not? But while you're doing it, uh, go ahead and everybody date somebody of every branch and take notes and let me know who paid for dinner, opened the door, uh, <laughs> called you the next day, didn't text too much because I hear that's a problem. Um, and and just find out who's the most romantic. All right. Are we ready? We're ready. For... This, one's, this one's not as heartwarming, unfortunately. No. But we've got pew, pew, rapid fire two. Can you just hear that with like an echo? Well, this is about Big Navy investigating SEAL basic training. So let's queue it up, baby. Let's so do it. You Sounds. just queued it up. Rapid fire two. Big Navy investigating SEAL basic training. Navy yeah. leadership has ordered an investigation into the broader circumstances <laughs> of SEAL basic training following the death of a candidate earlier this year and recent media reports that raise questions about the rigors of basic underwater demolition seal or BUDS training, as well as the steps sailors are willing to take to get through. The Navy investigation into the BUDS process follows a separate probe into the February 4th death of Seaman Kyle Mullen, 24, at the end of Hell Week that raised further questions about the brutal training regimen, according to the Sea Service. Can I start by saying this is the first time I knew what buds meant? I I never knew it was basic underwater demolition. Nope. Nope. Didn't know. It wasn't in any of the myriad of books that all seals have to write when they get out. So I just <laughs> I had, I had no I I don't I had no idea. So I wish that was incorrect. Huh? I said I wish that was incorrect. <laughs> we love all of our Navy SEALs for the record. We do. We do. What what do you what do you think of this? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ashley's speechless for a moment. You know, when she, I... when, when she does get rolling, if you hear her say the word, if she pauses for a brief second and says <laughs> right, then uh, buckle up, get a snack and prepare. So you know me so well. <laughs> right? um, so what I will say about this is that you know, these things are incredibly unfortunate and it's a brutal training regimen, right? Um, I, my, you know, condolences to, to the family. I hope that they find whatever they're looking for in, in the probe, right? But this is a very dangerous, this is a very dangerous training. Like it's not, it's not for, you know, Mm, for lack of better words, um, it's not easy. It's not made to be easy. So, well, here's the yeah. the metric I'm looking for. Is the is the is the training tough enough so that 
we lose far fewer people to training than are saved on the battlefield because of that training. Because I, I think, have, I, I, I don't intimately know the missions of, of the SEAL teams, but if, if a lot of them are going to die on their missions because of, the training wasn't sufficient enough, uh, then I, I think, and I don't want to disrespect anybody that's passed, but I, I think those are risks we have to consider. Um, not to put people in a spreadsheet, hate that. Uh, but if you lose three to save a hundred, uh, how do, how does how does that math work? And I, I'm guessing that's what this um, some of this investigation is. But I do know the military is also really famous for trying to outdo each other. And Shocker. if one special forces group or special operations, sorry, there's only one special force. I've been told about that. Um, special operations group does something in training. The others have to do something a little harder just to, just to, so they can say they got through the toughest one, but they don't talk about, did it make me a better war fighter? And if these, these things that they're making them do are not making them better war fighters, they need to look at them because that's, that's, it's, it's always tragic. It's more tragic to me to lose somebody in training because they weren't, they, they weren't even, they didn't even get to use that training and um, they didn't get to do a mission. I don't know. I don't know. Am I a little sentimental? Am I a little, am I a little spreadsheety? Or am I kind of both? I got a little both. I got a little both. A little both, um, a little both bud. Little, a little, see, I did there, bud. Yeah, buds. But buds. I definitely didn't do basic underwater demolition, seal trait. Wow, that demolition, I didn't even know. Um, so that's, that's, that's that. Do you want to go back in and try your hand at some, uh, some buds? No, nope, training, good. training. I should finish that. Um, all right. <laughs> so I think, go there. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there. So we are going to, we are going to say, uh, to the family of seaman Kyle Mullen that we are very sorry for your loss. We hope that uh, your loved one has the catalyst for figuring out uh, what this training should and can be. Perhaps it could be even improved based on what they find. I don't know. But uh, Kyle Mullen's name is etched in this situation and it, his name is going to be used to figure things out. And I, I don't know if that gives any comfort, but it, uh, it, it gives him a place in history. So you do have that. All right, Ashley, that was a show. That was a show. I mean, we had, we had psychedelics. We had, we had space force space with no Steve Carell. Uh, although he, he, I'd love to hear what he has to say about that. We have World War II veterans joining before their first birthday. SEAL, SEAL investigate. I mean, that's a lot of show. It's and a lot of show. So why don't you just take, take us, us out? Yeah, because I'm exhausted. I always think of um, Fair the Big, uh, was it Big Blue House? Is he, so he sings the goodbye song. Anyway, so I'll take us out. I won't sing anymore, folks, but I feel inclined to. <laughs> it's like goodbye. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I will I will control myself. I'm in a mood. All right. So with that being said, don't forget to subscribe to the Tango Alpha Lima podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are consuming your podcasts. Please leave us a review and give us a big old five-star rating so that the world knows how much you adore us. And if you do have a guest recommendation, we highly encourage you to go to the legion.org backslash Tango Alpha Lima website and click the suggest a guest link and let us know who you want to hear from. That's outstanding. 
Thank you. You had that book on tape voice right there. And I I just yeah. wanted to I wanted to hear the next chapter. So Thank maybe you. you should uh work on work on doing that. Yeah, you're the one out in Hollywood. Hook me up with some voice acting stuff. People it's in a Hollywood, niche, it's a, no people in Hollywood don't read. They uh mm. anything more oh. than a script. We do scripts, we don't do books. Yeah. I mean, maybe how, I should do we that. Are. Sounds like I could I could do that. All yeah. right. Anybody knows anything? Alpha, send me in some info. Let's do it. Let's figure it out. Alpha's after you do some career <laughs> planning for Miss Ashley Marie Gorbulja. Uh, <laughs> I encourage you to get people uh, to jump on this train we call Tango Alpha Lima because we have some big things in store coming up. I don't know what they are, but I, I've heard we have some huge, great, important, funny, touching, crying, laughing that's going to be a part of this future. And I want it to be a part of your future and your friend's future. So when you're at, hanging around at parties, you have something to talk about. With that, Ooh. I'm going to declare season three, episode one, two, seven, mission complete.